Welcome to our lesson on angles and their measure. Uh, this one's going to be full of a lot of vocabulary and a lot of stuff that might be um, review for you, so please feel free to fast forward to the section that only applies to the stuff you need to look at. Let's start with some of that vocabulary. Angles. Well, we all know what an angle is, right? Well, formally an angle is just a ray, which is just a, a directional line, and it meets at a vertex. Simple, right? Who cares? This is the important stuff. Initial side, terminal side. The initial side is where the ray starts, the terminal side is where it ends, and the angle is just that degree measurement in between the two, or it can be a, a, a measurement in radians. But because we're on a, a circular system, we can have uh, an infinite number of angles that end up in the same position, right? If you can imagine uh, the turret on a tank that can spin around and around and around, well, that turret can either start here at the initial side, right, starting here, and turn to the right to get to here, or it can turn all the way around this way to get to there. Or, it could have gone around a few times, right? Around and around and around and around and then stopped. So you can have all these infinite number of angle measurements that are going to get you that same location, but they do all have different mathematical properties, whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise, where clockwise is considered going negative, which is very strange, and then counterclockwise is considered positive, so it's a little counterintuitive, no pun intended. We're usually used to seeing angles in the xy axis, right on the, the coordinate plane, and in that case we always start, right, our standard position or our initial is always on the x-axis in the positive direction. This piece right here, that's going to be your initial side, and then this is going to be your terminal side, and the angle is going to be the thing that got you there, depending on if you went clockwise or counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, right, going all the way around to there, would be 270 degrees. This measurement, 270. Um, this is a lot of uh, kind of, there's you know all of this um, vocabulary in these little boxes on the left as we're going through these slides. I really wouldn't worry about it so much. It's it's not important. You can look at it, but I'm not a big fan of memorizing all this vocabulary. Just know the basic stuff. So how about let's get into the basic stuff. We want to draw each angle in standard position. 60 degrees. Well, that's two-thirds of 90, so there's our angle that's basically two-thirds of the way between the x and y axis. Simple. 135, well, that's 90 plus 45, so we go to 90, which gets us that far, right? And then the 45 we know is halfway in between. Negative 240 is going around this way, and since negative 240 is 180, and 60, we know that this angle is 60, that piece there is 30, so it's about two-thirds of the way up. You could also think of it in the other uh, way that uh, negative 240 plus 360, because that's what it is to go all the way around, right, gives us 120, which is 90 plus 30, so if we went 90 plus 30, same thing. Since 405 is 360 plus 45, we just went all the way around and then 45 degrees. How about the difference between degree and radian? Well, uh, degrees are uh, related to time, right? You've got one uh, degree and then you've got uh, one minute and one second. So one degree equals 60 minutes, that's the symbol for minutes, 
and then one minute equals 60 seconds. So every single degree is cut up into 60 minutes. It's similar to each foot being cut up into 12 inches, right? And then each minute is also cut up into 60 seconds. So everything is, is a, a factor of 60. And the reason why we chose 60 is because there's 360 going all the way around, so it kind of holds to that pattern. Okay, a radian measure is just another way of relating angles to the uh, arc of a circle. <clears throat> it's two ways of measuring the same thing. We're still measuring an angle. It really is no different than talking about something in inches versus centimeters. It's two different measurements for a linear length, right? This is going to be two different measurements for an angular length, right? We're measuring an angle. The uh, formula here can seem kind of, um, I don't know, difficult, and, and I think they're making it far more difficult than it needs to be. Just think of it this way. Draw yourself a picture of the unit circle, right? Here's a circle. How many degrees are there in a circle? Right. If we start here and go all the way around, we've done 360 degrees. Okay. Well, how many radians are there in a circle? If we go all the way around the circle, how far have we gone? Well, we've gone 2 pi. This is 1 pi. This is 2 pi. So 360 is the same thing as going around 2 pi. So that means 180 degrees is equal to pi. And now you have a very easy um, conversion between the two. If you know 180 degrees is equal to pi, so every pi is equal to 180 degrees, so now you've got an easy way to go from radians to degrees, and then every degree, right, one degree, equals pi over 180, right, one 180 of a pi, or you can think of you know, what are some simple things? Uh, pi over 2 equals 90 degrees. Pi over 4, well, 180 divided by 4, 45 degrees, etc., 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 right? So once you have that 360 equals 2 pi thing, the rest is simple. So now we can convert. Like I said, 180, pi, 180 degrees equals pi radians, and we can go back and forth now with any uh, conversion we want. So if we want to convert 30, 90, etc, etc, we know that it's just 30 degrees times pi over 180 because that was our relationship, right? Pi equals 180, so pi over 180 is just 1. It's like saying 12 inches over 1 foot. That's still 1. So you're really just multiplying 30 degrees by 1, but by doing this, you cancel degrees. They didn't write it here, but you technically have a little degree here and a little degree here, and those cancel. Just like 30 cancels with 180 to just give you 6 pi over 6 radians. Similarly with 90 degrees, similarly with negative 225, can we see we're just doing the same thing over and over again? Right? Pi over 180, pi over 180. If we want to go in the other direction, so pi over 3 radians, and we want to figure out what that is in degrees, well, same thing. Instead of pi over 180, we now do 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. We're left with 180. 180 divided by 3, 60. Simple. And you can see the other two are just the same. Okay, complements and supplements. It's very easy to find complements and supplements once you know what the heck a complement and a supplement is. So, Two positive angles, right? They've got to be positive, are considered complements or complementary angles if they add up to 90. So that's all it is. A complement just means those two angles add to 90. And then supplements are any two angles that add to 180. Why do we choose 90 and 180? Because those are pretty important, right? 90 degrees is a right angle, that's important. And then 180 degrees, that's straight, right? That's a straight line. So any two things that add up to a straight line are supplementary or supplement angles and a right angle, those are 90, those are complementary. 
find the complement of 73. Well, duh, it's just whatever you add to 73 to get 90. So sure, you could think of it as something plus 73, or you could just go, hey, how about 90 minus 73 is 17? All right. Um, the complement of 110 does not exist because we would have to add a negative angle to it. And remember, the uh, definition is they have to be positive angles. But we could find the supplement of 110, right? and it would be very simply just 70, which is what we did on the right. Find the length of an arc of a circle. Well, we know that length is designated by the angle that created it. Right? If I draw a different uh, angle, only going to here, and then draw the line that goes there, I now have a different arc length. Right? So arcs are um, basically created by angles. You take an angle, and that's going to create an arc, length, an arc length along with it. Well, you might also notice that if my radius was bigger, don't those arc lengths become bigger? And if my radius is smaller, don't those arc lengths become smaller? Boy, that was a bad one. Um, yes, so not only is arc length dependent on the angle, it's also dependent on the radius. Okay? Very simply put, we have this wonderful relationship that S, the length of the arc, is dependent, right? Equal to just the radius, length of the radius, times this angle. So the bigger the radius gets, the bigger the arc length gets. That makes sense. The bigger the angle gets, the bigger the arc length gets. It makes sense. The, the, the equation is intuitive. So now with a simple formula like that, we can solve all sorts of questions asking about arc length. If our circle has a radius of 18 inches and we want to find the length of the arc that has an angle of 210, all you got to do is plug all that stuff in. Now you might want to ask yourself, well, why am I changing 210 to radians in order to do this answer? Because arc lengths are always measured in terms of pi. They're always measured in terms of radians. So whenever you're given an angle measurement, right, a measurement in angles, 200, uh, sorry, an angle measurement in degrees, 210 degrees, the first thing you have to do is convert it to radians. Now plug that into the formula. 18 for your radius, 7 pi over 6 for your uh, angle measurement. Do the math, and you get almost 66 inches. Okay. We can find the distance between cities with this idea. The latitude L, I'm sorry, the latitude of L is the angle formed by uh, rays drawn from the center of the Earth to the point L and P, with the ray through P being the initial ray. So this is the initial side of our angle, and then L is the terminal length of our angle. So starting at the center of the Earth, connect the two dots that are out here on the surface. This angle that's created in between them right, is the angle that we're going to use to figure out the distance, because now we have an angle, we have a radius, because we know how big the Earth is, and this will tell us this length, this arc length, in between those two cities. Billings, Montana is exactly north of Grand Junction, and we want to find the distance between Billings, which has a, a latitude of that, 45 degrees, 48 minutes north, and Grand Junction, which is 39 degrees, 7 minutes, we can use 3,960 miles as the radius. Well, I know this picture is a little too small to see. If we blew it up, let's just um, look at it like this. This angle here is the angle from the equator up to Grand Junction. That's this, 39 degrees 7. And then 
going all the way up, that's Billings, which is 45, 48. So we can find this distance here, that angle, as being the difference between the two, right? If this was 30 degrees, this first one, the small one was 30 degrees, and the big one was 50 degrees, wouldn't the little piece have to be 20? So all we have to do is find the difference between those two, and that will be the measurement of that angle, right? And the radius is the same everywhere. And so if we know this little angle in here, and we know the length of the radius, we can figure out this arc length, the thing in between those two cities. First things first, what's the difference between those two angles? So 45, 48, minus 39, 7. The math here is easy, but just remember that um, these are based on 60. So if you had to like carry or anything, you know, like if this was 45, 2, and you had to subtract 39, 7 from it, and you had to carry over, when you made this a 44, you'd be adding 60 and not 100. So that's one place where uh, students can make mistakes very easily that you have to remember that there are 60 minutes in one degree so when you carry over you're carrying 60 at a time but here it's easy because 48 minus 7 we don't have to worry about carries so we just get 6 degrees 41 minutes now we have to figure out what that is roughly as a decimal because we need to um, convert it to radians and our radian conversion is only based on degrees it's not based on degrees and minutes so where do they get 0.6833 well, that's 41 out of 60 minutes, right? If you do that, that's where you get the 0.6833. So there's our total degrees times our conversion. There's our measurement in radians. Now we plug that in for, right, theta. We plug 3960 in for uh, the radius and our answer is in miles and they are roughly 463 miles away from each other. How about if we want to compute linear and angular speed when we have angles? Well okay suppose an object is traveling around a circle of radius r. So like if you were um, had something tied to a string and you were spinning it around above your head that object would be traveling around in a circle and the radius would be basically the length of the string. If the object travels through an angle of, that's a theta, theta radians, and an arc of length s in time t, then we can figure out their linear speed with this simple formula. Now I know that seems like a lot of stuff being thrown at you at once, so draw yourself a picture. You've got a circle, right? Here's one spot, here's another spot. So we have an object that travels through an angle of theta degrees. So that means this angle here is theta. It travels through that angle. That's what it means to travel through that angle from this point A to this point B. As it travels along this arc, it's gone through that angle theta. And the arc of length s, right? This arc has a length. S. It's traveled along this path, so it's covered a certain distance, and that path is S, and then it took a certain amount of time to do it. So all they're saying is that the V for velocity, right, is the average speed of the object. If it travels along this path in a certain amount of time, so distance divided by time equals speed right miles per hour right that's a speed so distance divided by time equals speed velocity or we that's that's its uh, speed along the path but we can also measure how fast this angle is changing and so that's a, a different symbol and now we're talking about the theta measurement right the measurement of the angle over time Furthermore, since we already have this equation that relates this distance along the arc to this angle in relationship to the radius, if we replace s 
by r over theta in this first example, right, in this first uh, formula, we get that v equals r theta over t. So v equals r theta over t, but we see from down here this equals theta over t. And by substitution, right, we just get that velocity equals r times, looks like a w, right? We can call it w. It's not. It's a Greek letter, but we won't bother. Okay, here's an example. You now have a model plane that's attached to a swivel, right, on a rope. It's kind of the idea of swinging something over your head on a string, only now it's just a plane that's doing it under its own engine power. And based on the uh, length of the string of being 12 feet, or 12 foot wire, sorry, uh, and it has a rate of 15 revolutions per minute. So now we know how fast it's spinning we can find the angular speed and the linear speed, i.e. how fast it's going around that path on the outside. That's what I mean by linear speed. Okay, angular speed is measured in radians per minute. So the first thing we have to do is convert revolutions per minute into radians per minute. And one revolution is going all the way around. And going all the way around, if you remember from our earlier picture, going all the way around is 2 pi radians. So if it does 15 revolutions in a minute, it does 15 times 2 pi, or 30 pi radians per minute. And we've now found its angular speed. Very simply, to find linear speed, we go back to that third kind of permutation of the formula, where linear speed just equals radius times angular speed and you get 12 times 30 pi feet per minute, or approximately 1,131 feet per minute. Pretty fast speed if you think about it. Um, if you convert that to miles per hour, that's pretty quick. All right, how about finding the area of a sector? Well, what the heck is a sector? A sector is just a piece of the circle. You can think of it as a pizza slice. If you start at the center, right, start at the center of the circle and cut out a wedge of it, or if you've ever played Trivial Pursuit, it's like one of those little wedge pieces in the pie. That's all a sector is. And we can find the area of that sector very simply by one half r squared times theta. So where does this uh, formula come from? Well, we all know that uh, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Right? Okay. Well, if we go all the way around, right, if we take this uh, terminal side, and instead of letting it stop here, we bring it all the way around, so we've now, uh, the wedge is now the entire circle. What is that degree measurement in radians? And hopefully you remember that to go all the way around a circle is 2 pi radians. So if you plug in 2 pi, right, because theta is measured in radians, you get 1 half r squared times 2 pi. The 2 and the 1 half cancel, and you get pi r squared. Okay? So that's all it is. That's all that's going on is we're taking that uh, formula for area of an entire circle, sorry, yeah, an entire circle, and going, how do we now cut it up and list it in any theta measurement? and that's where it's coming from. With that in mind, we can now um, figure out how many square inches of pizza you've eaten if you eat a certain slice. So if you can figure out the angle of the slice and you know the uh, radius of the pizza, you can now figure it out with your simple formula of area equals one-half r squared theta. Okay, so first things first, you got to convert that uh, degree measurement to radians. So 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. 
The radius is half the diameter, and since they told us the diameter was 18 inches, we now know the radius is 9 inches. Plug everything in, put in the 9 for r, put in the pi over 6 for theta, we've got the 1 half, you do the math, and you get roughly 21 square inches of pizza. I know it's kind of a simple example and kind of a silly example because who cares to know how much pizza you ate, but you get the idea that if we want to find the area of a sector, it really comes back to the area of the entire circle, which is pi r squared, and then figure out that there's 2 pi to go all the way around. So each theta, right, is just one half of it, and there's where you get um, your normal measurement.